And we're back here on the Social Justice Forums. Want to let you know the Fordham Anti-Racist Alumni Collective is coming together in support of the university's Black Student Alliance's demands for making Fordham University a more equitable place to go to school in an attempt to minimize the harm done by racism, anti-Blackness, and abuse that has allegedly persisted on campus since its founding. As a group, their number one value and purpose is to center Black voices and specifically to uplift and support the voices of Black students and alumni of Fordham, both in the current national movement and then also the movement for Black lives and moving forward. Here to provide more information is the Fordham University's Black Student Alliance President, Deontay Santiago. And then we've also got the Vice President, Miranda Rydell, and we welcome you here to the Social Justice Forum. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Um, and so listen, I'll start first with uh, Miranda, if you let me know a little bit about, you know, from your perspective, give us a little bit about the climate and the culture at Fordham University as you see things from your perspective. Sure. Um, well, Fordham is a, a PWI, which is a predominantly white institution. So um, in general, there already is um, a sort of divide in terms of demographic between students because there are more um, white students than black students uh, specifically. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what our numbers are right now, but I think um, the black student population on campus is somewhere between like three and 4%. Um, and Deontay can correct me if I'm wrong, um, which is clearly not a lot. Our school is like somewhere around 3000 students for undergrad. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. So our club um, is quite small just because of the fact that there aren't a lot of black students on campus. Um, and I think especially recently, given the you know political scheme um, pre this recent election, um, it's been more difficult because I think a lot of white students have been emboldened to um, be more like openly racist and discriminatory towards black students and students of color. Um, so I I think that answers your question. It, let me know if I missed a part. Oh, you of hit, you hit, you hit. And Deontay, I'll let you jump in a little bit as we talk about what is going on on campus right now. As a student, how do you feel as a as a student of color? How do you feel uh, amidst the uh, amidst the student population uh, being a minority? From my, from my four, my last four years at Fordham University, me and Miranda are seniors right now, so you know we're about to be on our way out. But uh, my last four years at Fordham University were a little bit um, tumultuous to say the least. As Miranda had pointed out, the demographics are about approximately 4% black students on the campus that is located in the middle of the Bronx, you know, which is somewhat of a, a jarring juxtaposition, you know, like being somebody who's also from the Bronx myself, you know, the, the, the clashing culture that was presented here at home in the Bronx versus, you know, a PWI that's in the middle of my community was somewhat, I, I, I would say, uh, for lack of better terms, it, it caught me out of like, it was like being a fish out of the water. It caught me off guard, you know? Yeah. So as my time on, on campus has proceeded, you know, I've definitely seen, um, I've seen a lot of microaggressions, you know, like it's not, it's never anything, oh, I mean, it definitely was overt at certain points in times, so, you know, like there's definitely examples you guys could Google them like 2016, you know, somebody had a racial slur and carved on their door, like their dorm door and stuff like that. Those things have happened at the campus, but more so, it's more so about the culture of the campus as presented as opposed to um, overt, you know, and, and, and that's, that's how it's going to be at most PWIs across the whole entire country. You know, there's the subtlety to the way that there's certain, um, ideas and certain thought patterns that are kind of presented that do kind of I like for lack of better terms like I said earlier they they perpetuate you know stereotypes or they perpetuate certain things that have people think lesser of not just minority students in general but of the population that they're kind of like inhabiting you know you in the Bronx you know people talk down on people from the Bronx you know like they're talking down on all minorities this is one of the most um, heterogeneous cities in the whole entire country, you know? So it's just a lot of like negative attitudes and stereotypes toward minorities, probably by people who've never really been around them, you know? Right. So, 
Right. And so to talk about the issue of race, to address the issue of race on the campus, what has been the response uh, from administration when these allegations are coming forward? And what's been the response of the administration uh, when you've laid these things out about the, uh, the culture and the climate? As far as our work, um, which uh, Deontay and I, sorry, uh, assume these positions for the fall semester. So we started um, kind of doing the work over the summer and uh, that's when there was a lot of uh, turmoil in the country in terms of like police brutality, um, coronavirus disproportionately affecting uh, black communities, all those things. So um, we definitely were thrown into, um, I'd say an important time in terms of communication with the university. Um, so the reason we're here is because of the demands um, which have been, a really big part of our uh, communication with administration. I'd say um, Deontay can also correct me if I'm wrong. I know right now we're at about like three of the 11 demands being addressed. Um, and we're still in conversation with administration about addressing the rest of the demands. So I think we're, um, you know, the bar, it, uh, unfortunately, is very low um, in terms of, um, our administration doing things to make life better for black students, students of color on campus. So three demands for us being addressed is a, an exciting thing, but we also know that uh, there's a lot more that we need to do. Um, and in our conversation with admin over the summer, um, I think they expressed to us that they were aware of the demands, but their priority was with opening campus back up um, rather than making, I mean, um, to put it bluntly, than making black students feel comfortable and supported on campus. Um, and since campus is open back up and they've been able to do that, we're definitely pushing more um, and just really holding them accountable uh, to these conversations that they said that they would be willing to have with us. Um, so they, they are responding, um, I guess, to answer your question more directly. Um, but I, I personally think that much more can be done. This is kind of a like, um, it's like it's like a, a satisfactory response, like a C in terms of like a grading scale, maybe not even. Um, there's definitely much more that they could do. Um, and I think that we're really understanding too of the times we're in a pandemic. So like, obviously there's more on their plate as well, but there's not really an excuse um, to not at least have these conversations with us more frequently. And, um, you know. And, and Deontay, I know that one of the things is talking about also bolstering the list of demands that's actually been given to Fordham University. Uh, I wanted to get your perspective on a couple of those demands and see uh, what you thought uh, as uh, we continue. I know one of the demands is talking about, you know, acknowledging and unpacking the public safety's ties to police as the University of Minnesota uh, has done with the MPD. And that's, of course, in response to the George Floyd uh, murder uh, as we as we know it to be. Uh, talk to us a little bit about this because uh, Fordham University does not have a written contract with the MPD, I mean with the with the New York City Police Department. However, uh, the Public Safety Department does hire XY, XNYPD officers and that does make, uh, from your perspective, black students uh, a little bit more in the area of concern because the NYPD uh, has a history, you say, allegedly of brutalizing, not allegedly, but definitely of brutalizing black and brown communities. Let's talk about this for a moment. Um, when you look at that and you unpack that, pretty much what we're saying is, listen, if you're going to hire people, we don't need we don't need former police officers. But then the question is, if you don't hire former police officers, who do you hire as a part to handle this? You know, um, we actually had a conversation with a uh, public safety in regards to, to this topic, actually. And um, the only thing, only response that we really had gotten in regards to it was that they don't have ties to the NYPD. Um, you know, that they kind of just like work together with them whenever it comes to like officially reporting things. So for example, like, you know, if a crime happened, you know, they'd report to NYPD for that. But as you said, you know, it is kind of known that Fordham University does hire a lot of um, ex-NYPD, you know. Um, in regards to 
to to who they could hire and and um to to make like better relations for the community and such. I definitely could say that like th there are alternatives, you know, like exploring the alternatives that other schools have explored. Like you know, the fact that M um, Minnesota University was able to kind of cut the ties with MPD and move forward with their own like public safety forces, whether it be like through contracted um security guards and such like Allied Universal, who we already have as security guards at each gate on the campus, you know. So um, those are the things that I guess we can move forward with. But if the school, you know, when we speak to them, they, they say that there are no ties. So there's not much that we really like past that conversation. There wasn't much that we could really do in regards to that, you know, because obviously, like, you know, the power structure is like we are just students. So, you know. Right. But when you talk about students, I mean, obviously, you guys have a voice and you've raised your voice. You talk about NYPD and, you know, and having that as far as security officers looking at the NYPD situation. But you've also raised your voice about administrative concerns as well, looking for more diversity inside uh, the administrative process of Fordham University. Um, you talked about having a diversity officer, uh, moving that chief diversity officer to being almost a senior vice president. Um, talk to us about that and what that would do for students and what do you perceive that would do for the culture? Funny enough that we mentioned that I actually am a fellow for the chief diversity officer. So like I'm one of his employees. I work in his office and shout out Rafael Zapata. He's a great guy. And I think he does a lot of good work at Fordham University when it comes to kind of trying to shift the culture. I would say that putting him in a higher position, which is like, you know, what we propose and like hopefully like, you know, something comes of that. Putting him in a higher position is going to directly influence the kind of decisions that the school makes in regards to what they do for students of color, minority students, however you want to phrase it, you know, because um, that's one of the biggest things that we we're trying to get at when we put out this list of demands is that we need a culture shift at Fordham University, you know, like all the things that we suggested to implement aren't necessarily like policies that have to be put in as like rules and stuff, you know, you mentioned diversifying administration, which is just about the same percentage probably as the students but you know also diversifying faculty you know and getting them from all intersectionalities of you know the black community you know those kind of things seeing representation for like students seeing representation in higher positions is important not only for building confidence but also for building relationships between these students and the administration and like kind of facilitating things for students of color you know so i think um putting somebody like rafael zapata the chief diversity officer into a higher position in which like he could probably influence things a little bit more is important to making students of color more comfortable on the campus, you know? And yeah. seeing those people in those positions is just important for people to see, you know? Yeah. Miranda, tell me about this because you talk about being seniors, rising seniors out of here, uh, hopefully graduating in a little while. Uh, legacy, right? You guys have some work to do after you guys have graduated. Are you confident that after graduation and after you guys graduate that the ball doesn't get dropped in these particular areas. Um, I think something that Deontay and I are trying really hard to do is to lay the groundwork for these conversations to continue to happen once we graduate. Um, and that's something that we have been trying to um, work with our e-board on. Um, right now it is mainly us and our secretary in the conversations, but um, as we move into the next semester, we kind of start to transition uh, leadership a little bit. And so that's something that we really hope to leave with our, uh, the rest of the e-board. Um, we're trying to like get our foot in the door so that it's easier for them to like schedule those meetings and actually have those meetings um, in the future. So legacy is something that Deontay and I have been really focused on. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get the second part of your question. No, just making sure that the legacy carries on because I think, you know, once students graduate and you've, and you've gone on, the ones that are behind are left to kind of like carry the load and, and pick up the mantle. And is there enough confidence that you have that those who are coming behind will be able to pick up the mantle, have these conversations, be able to deal with a lot of these issues that you guys are dealing with because um, while you may move on, the systemic racism and, and the things that go on, sometimes they don't go, I will not, not sometimes, they don't go away. Yeah, um, I definitely get that. Um, I, I mean, I can't speak for Deontay, but I'm very confident uh, that the board's gonna be able to continue to make progress, make even more progress than we've made. Um, they are beyond capable 
Um, and I'm actually really excited and hopeful to see uh, the work that they do. Um, Deontay and I too are gonna make sure that you know, we keep an open line of communication with all of them um, as support systems, but also just like logistical questions and things that they might have um, about continuing this work in these conversations. So I'm, I'm really confident and excited to see what they're gonna do when we graduate in the spring. Yeah. Well, Deontay, talk to me about COVID-19. Obviously, a lot of people have been impacted by COVID-19 on campus life. And uh, with campus life being the way that it is with, with COVID-19, how optimistic are you that some of these demands and things will actually be able to be met, carried out, and executed, uh, given the fact that, you know, the university is having its own challenges there? Oh, um, that's that's a great question because you know we actually had like conversations surrounding that. It, it's difficult to ask a university who might be going through like you know budget deficits and such. You know, I already know that Fordham is high, like is going through like a process of hiring freeze and such because of all the financial issues that they're having thanks to COVID nineteen. Well, not thanks due to COVID nineteen. You know, so um, I understand the difficulties. You know, and it, it's a lot of pressure to be put on this university because you know. While COVID-19 was happening, the Black Lives Matter movement was happening, and like a lot of other movements that are kind of like shaping in the Fordham University, like Fordham University's community are happening. So I just like I said, I understand the pressure. Um, however, you know, these are issues that existed before COVID-19, you know. So these are things that have to be addressed and kind of fixed. I I'm expecting slow progress, but I mean, I'm just an optimist in general. So, you know, I'm expecting progress in general. Like I'm I'm hopeful to a degree, you know. Um Within this last year, like like Miranda said, three out of the eleven were addressed. You know, I feel like before before list of demands even came out, if even if they did come out, none of them would have been addressed. You know, and like that's just talking from the perspective and like the mindset that I understood that some administrators had. You know, um, I'm a student in the Gabelli School of Business, and I remember once I sat in a meeting with um some administration who were talking about you know administration faculty and such who were talking about like diversity statistics. And, you know, and somebody was like, hey, like um you know, the school is about 60% white students. So, you know, isn't that good? That's like, you know, that's like approximately what the nation is until another faculty member had pointed out like, hey, it's only 4% black students. So that's not accurate, you know? So it's like, I understood like the mindset before like um, a lot of these issues that came about weren't necessarily about addressing and fixing. I believe that now, because like it's been so much more of an issue, the university does have its eyes on it. And while progress might be slow, I believe progress is going to happen. You know, like I, like Miranda said, like we've been sitting in a lot of conversations with them and, you know, things are getting addressed slowly, but surely, I believe. And as long as, like you had mentioned, Darren, like these conversations continue in the future and a legacy is instilled that kind of brings about the culture of continuing these conversations that students continue to engage in, I think we'll be fine. But, you know, like you said, as long as the ball doesn't drop here, everything will be good, if you ask me. All righty. Well, we got to leave it there, but thank you guys for uh, joining us and sharing with us. Um, I think it's important that we understand what's going on at Fordham University. It's very important. And uh, best wishes to what the work that you're doing, the work you're doing in class as well, and then also your gradu upcoming graduation. So please stay safe and also keep us informed. Gotcha. Thank you for having us again. No, thank you. Deontay, Miranda, thanks much. Yeah, thank you. All right, I'm going to take a quick break here on the social justice forums. We'll be right back right after this.